Hello, so now that we've seen that in the long run, some variables uh, reach a steady state, but others do not, uh, then it's time to define a more general concept to describe model dynamics. Uh, so here it is, the concept of the balanced growth path. So the definition is a balanced growth path is a trajectory such that all variables grow at a constant rate. Uh, so um, if a variable is at steady state, then its growth rate is zero, so it's constant, perfect. But then it also means that other variables can grow, but as long as the growth rate is constant, then we see it's a balanced growth path. Uh, does, um, are we sure that uh, a balanced growth path exists? No, not at all. But uh, we may get lucky with the solo model. Uh, another thing to notice is that uh, there's no, no guarantee that all variables grow at the same rate. Uh, some variables may grow at the rate of zeros, other 2%, other 4%. Um, so we have to compute them. And uh, this is important for you to uh, get your, uh, uh, your mind around. So if uh, some variable, I say x here, is on its balanced growth path, then x changes all, all the time, so there's no fixed value for it. But if uh, it, the growth rate is uh, constant, then it means that it, uh, it, it has a single value, so we can see that its growth rate is a steady state. Uh, so we will de denote this growth rate by simply g of x with a star, meaning what growth rate does that variable have on the balanced growth path. So the question that everyone is asking themselves, so uh, is there a balanced growth path in the Solo-Swan model for capital and output? If I'm asking the questions, probably you guess that uh, it might be a, use, a useful concept, so probably yes, so let's uh, look, at, look at it. Um, so now we're going to use our nice uh, definition or nice notation of growth, so g of k is uh, delta k over k, g of capital K is uh, delta capital K over k, so the growth of capital, and g of y uh, is uh, delta y over k, so the growth of uh, total output. And then, um, so we know that uh, k star is stable in the long run, uh, delta uh, small k star, so the capital per worker, so we know that the growth rate of k star, uh, uh, g of k star, is zero. Uh, but what about the growth rate of the capital stock itself or the output itself in the long run? Well, this is uh, what we're going to try to compute next. Um, so just to give you an intuition, so uh, now let's start with cap uh, the capital. So first of all, we know that uh, capital per worker is K equals capital stuff divided by labor. We know that, right? Uh, so we know that in the long run, we just said that this does not grow, g of small k is, uh, is equal to zero. What is the growth of labor? Well, we just said it's n, it's constant, it doesn't change. So uh, now I let you guess uh, what may be the growth rate in the long run of capital K. Okay, now let's... Uh, Let's write it down. So uh, we have the following. So G of small k star. If I uh, use what I know about growth, right? So it's equal to G of uh, capital K star minus G of capital L star, right? because uh, we know it's a ratio, so it's the growth rate of capital minus the growth rate of labor. And I know that in the long run, this is zero. So what does that imply? Well, 
Well, it implies simply that g of k star equals g of l star equals n. So we see that uh, in the end, the economy is going to accumulate capital at the same rate as it accumulates uh, new workers, which makes sense again in uh, my uh, example of a factory. Does if I want to have, if I think the optimal is to have one worker, one machine, then as long as I increase the amount of worker by a, a constant fraction, then I have to continue on and increase the amount of machines by the same amount of, uh, the, by the same fraction. So uh, this makes intuitive sense. So what does that mean? Well, it means that capital has a balanced growth path because uh, in the long run, its growth rate is going to be N. Now we can uh, do the same thing for uh, output. Uh, do we have uh, some intuition about uh, what will happen to output? This uh, uh, is a bit less uh, straightforward, but we uh, still can think about it. Uh, so how do we uh, think about this? Well, consider the following. So since uh, output per worker is equal to, as we have seen, uh, f of capital per worker and since g of capital per worker in the long run equals zero then what does that mean for the long run, uh, long run uh, growth rate of uh, uh, little y well, yes, if uh, capital per worker doesn't change and Y is a direct function of capital per worker, then in the long run, uh, output per worker does not change either. So G of small y star equal zero. So the growth rate of uh, capital per worker is as a steady state and the growth rate of output per worker as a steady state. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, it means that g of small y star equals, again, I do the same thing. So what is a small y? Well, it's capital Y total output divided by capital L total population. So its growth rate is g of y star minus G of star. So I know that G of Y star will be equal to G of L star, which is again equal to N. So output is going to grow at the same rate as population growth. Uh, so it, it's what I'm describing here is essentially a country in which everything is dictated by how many people live in that country. So if you have a population of uh, 1000 peop people, then you have some uh, production and some capital output. If you double the population in the long run, then uh, uh, in the long run, you should also double the output and double the capital. Uh, so this looks like uh, intuition, uh, intuitive uh, observation of uh, what, how the economy should work. Um, but is that how real economies uh, work? Well, in sum, what I, uh, I wrote it here. So capital and output grow at the same rate as the labor force. So capital per capita and output per capita do not grow. But then the question is, do these facts uh, agree with the Caldor facts that we have uh, described earlier? If they do, then fine, the model seems good. If they don't, then uh, we have to be very suspicious of, about uh, our model. So think about it for a second. Try to remember what uh, these facts were. All right. so. 
these facts were. Um, first, first fact was labor uh, productivity has grown as a sustained rate. Here, is that the case? No. Why? Well, we have just seen that labor productivity in that context is y divided by n because um, yeah here the, the the population is the working population equals y and we have seen that it is stable so no labor productivity does not grow in this model so it doesn't uh, agree with uh, the uh, first Calder fact. Second Calder fact, capital per worker has grown at a sustained rate. Is that the case? Well, no, for the same reason. Here we have big K over big N equals small K. And we see, we've see we seen that small K actually reaches a steady state. So um, yeah, we can see this constant. Is constant. Or one argument we can make, could make to save the model is to argue that uh, actually no uh, industrializing economy is ever uh, in the underbalanced growth path. So there, are, so all the, these uh, facts that we're describing, which apply to the balanced growth path, don't apply because they're catching up. For instance, however, that's not a very strong. Uh, argument and maybe we can uh, do better than that so here let, let me conclude since capital gr uh, grows at the same rate as the workforce then it can uh, it cannot make workers more productive over time um, so we need uh, so instead of claiming we're not at the on the balance growth path what maybe we need is some extra ing ingredient and you may remember that this missing ingredient is going to be Technology. If we have, uh, if we invent stuff, uh, we, if we invent stuff, then workers become more productive, and this is what we are going to see now.